Dr. Lori, I'm in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota at the Goodwill e-commerce center. Behind the scenes, this is where all the jewelry is. This is where they basically will list and they will process all the jewelry that comes through that is then sold online through their auctions um, and their buy it now online at e-commerce. So this is back behind the scenes. And we've got a lot of these pieces. Each one of these pieces, each one of these these boards actually would be one lot that you could purchase. So maybe you need, you know, a, uh, a, a earring stand, or maybe you need a tiara because everybody needs a tiara. <laughs> Some of them are in bags, um, but basically in this particular box, you see this theme of of hearts. So a lot of different hearts in this manner. Costume jewelry, so a lot of it's gold plated, some of it is faux pearls, some of it is crystals, that's kind of a nice piece. Some of it is crystals, um, some brooches and the like. Um, got some earrings, and here's just a love, there's a love bracelet. Um, I really, I do like this with the big heavy, with the big heavy link chain um, and the heart at the bottom as a pendant. This is kind of, this is a bracelet that goes along with this bracelet goes along with the necklace so you've got matches of certain pieces in here too oops didn't put that back well there you go um, and then some really inexpensive pieces like you know little teddy bear and resin those kinds of things that kind of looks like it's nice um, with the graduated pearls and the pendant and this one does have a mark on it that says that it is gold over sterling so, and the mark is very tiny, hard to find. It's right on this little bale. So it's a pin, and it's also a pendant, and it's, you can see that it's gold, and it is marked, and it's sterling silver with a gold plating. So this particular piece is, of course, your graduated large pearl to the smaller pearl. So that's a lovely little piece, and it's very common for sterling silver to be gold plated. Um, this particular piece, I would say, value on this is going to be about seventy-five dollars for that one little pin. So, in this great, in this great, um, diverse setting of all of these pieces, you have a lot of things that might be worth, you know, more than you thought. This is, of course, costume jewelry. That's a nice little pin pendant too, probably in the ten-dollar range. But I love this because I like the fact that it's, again, it's. It's two-toned, first the roses and the long stems, gold tone metal, and then you have, again, this, these nice roses, which are um, also decorative. Now, from the back, you can see that it's a 1980s piece, and you can see that each one of these flowers are, are actually metal, and they're actually folded, and then, of course, colored with the blue, with the blue, excuse me, with the red. So I like that. I like that pin for about 20 bucks. It's a nice pin. But again, costume jewelry. This piece is a piece which is all of the costume jewelry faux pearls. That's a nice piece. But I like this whole piece. I like that whole set. I like the red. The red will attract the eye when you're looking at the listing. Don't forget about that on your own listings and uh, if you are a reseller. And then they throw in things that are kind of unusual, like here's an, here's an earring stand. Most of the stuff is in bags. So you can buy, of course, by weight um, in bags or even in boxes. <laughs> Look at this. It's amazing stuff that's in here just tons of, of all kinds now of course the fun part of this is untangling it <laughs> but again it really there is a lot in here if you say to yourself oh I'm gonna buy one and here are the earrings those are nice earrings on the original card um, if you're gonna buy one um, lot and then you could resell the whole thing or you just say hey you know what I really need this plastic bracelet you know for my Hannah Montana day <laughs> when you want to dress like her. Um, some nice, a ni this is another one of these, um, another one of these boxes that would be one lot. So in this lot, well, you've got multiples in these other lots. In this lot, you only have two. So only two necklaces. You've got this, which is a nice necklace of um, malachite. Malachite, very well known. This green stone, graduated, single strand, big here, all the way up, probably three millimeters, all the way to maybe eight or nine millimeters. And then you have the multicolored um, malachite. You have some rose quartz and some other stones on this particular necklace. So in this lot, there's only two necklaces because they're expensive. Value on that lot, I would say the malachite is easily sixty-five to seventy-five dollars for the one necklace. The other necklace is probably worth about thirty bucks. Let's say a hundred bucks for that. So that's a nice piece too. As I said, you'll find them in bags. You'll find them in 
boxes. And uh, then we found some pieces that are brand names. This is all Brighton. And you probably know Brighton. I first met Brighton. I first met the Brighton folks. Actually, I like that a lot. I think that's a really nice pendant, necklace, sterling silver. And uh, these pieces in their Brighton stores, which you find them on, on, in a lot of malls. You also find them in, of course, um, airports. I always found them there. I actually met the owners of Brighton's when I was traveling. I was in Russia and uh, at the Hermitage Museum. And uh, we had dinner together one night. They were very interested in uh, getting my take on uh, some art that they wanted to purchase. Um, but we had a lovely time. They were very nice people. But their, their story was really wonderful of a, a young couple in the 1970s wanting to start their own business. And uh, be, it became Brighton's. And uh, I, whenever I see it, I think of that trip. And I think of them and a lot of fun we had in the museums um, visiting together. So sterling silver, um, often marked. Some of it's plated. It depends on the pieces. But definitely, this is a very nice quality um, and very nice design for this lot that's going to be sold through Goodwill.com, um, shopgoodwill.com. Trinket boxes usually come along too. So you've got you know uh, ring holders and you've got a trinket box for maybe your earrings so you don't lose them. These are actually used as trinket boxes, but these are called Limoges boxes. And these open right up. This one was from Mary Kay, but a Limoges box was made in Limoges, France of ceramic. And uh, this one was probably a giveaway to somebody who sold a lot of Mary Kay. <laughs> um, but these are uh, boxes that a lot of people will keep their earrings in and have little trinket boxes on their vanity or on their dresser. More of the same, you know, here's some pins, you know, more of the same here, and then some bracelets and some necklaces. And, you know, people go through these, these, bo these boxes all the time and they always find treasures. They find all kinds of things. You've seen that on, of course, Real Bargains with Me where people will buy a jewelry lot and they'll end up finding diamond rings or end up finding a necklace, platinum or gold or such. And then cameos. So uh, they sometimes will um, do these lots by theme. So there's a lot of different cameos out there. Some of them are real cameos. Some of them are things like this, which is camphor glass and it's carved in in the 1950s. That was pretty popular. Um, some of them are actually older pieces like Edwardian pieces. This of course is carved glass and this particular piece has gilt inside of it um, so far. Then you have a lot of these plastic cameos that are not really um, carved shells at all. They're not carved shell cameos. And then you have pieces like again more camphor glass. Um, in this particular lot. This is a nice piece too, uh, a purple glass in this case. Um, this, which is not, again, trying to look like a piece of Jasper ware, like um, Wedgwood ceramic, but not Wedgwood ceramic. This is also carved. But then you see this. These are basalt. These are swank cufflinks. And they are actually rose gold. And they come from the, they're in the 1950s. You can see the heads and the classical heads. These are gentlemen's cufflinks. And you can see the color of the gold. You can see how sort of fake gold this looks like. You see this? This is faux gold, basically, costume jewelry. And you can see this. The gold color around these in this hand are, in fact, a much more deeper classic gold. So these are actually 10-karat um, gold. And they have basalt, which is a ceramic medallion in the middle. They're marked on the back, and they say swank on the back. Swank were the 1960s, highly collectible cufflinks. And you know, they might have put this in here to say, hey, you know, along with all these other costume jewelry pieces, we want you to get some pieces that really have some significant value. These are about $75 to $85 for the pair. So that pair alone are going to be about $85. These are about $65 for each one of those. And then you have all of these other pieces, which are really um, trying to look like, you know, this one. Trying, this is from the 1960s, trying to look like earlier classical pieces. But you can see the other, um, not only the carved out head, but also you're seeing, again, this nice long necklace here. So this piece in my hand in that, in that again, $75 range. So this is a really nice cameo themed uh, group. And here's a little, uh, a wooden bracelet. Here, 
That is actually a, a cameo too on it. But this is a nice cameo themed group. Um, but again, this one looks like it has a mark on it. And that's an Avon mark. So that's probably a $10 piece. But these guys over here, those are your winners in this particular lot. Uh, that's inexpensive. That's kind of junky. But uh, the rest of these are really quite nice. So these would be all sold together. And that's what we would see here. I'm going to put those right there in the middle. But really a nice group for all of them of uh, these particular pieces of cameos. And when it comes to all of these types of jewelry, you want to make sure that you are, if you're a cameo collector, you know, this is great. And sometimes the actual, ne the actual necklaces or the chains that they're on could be um, not the same kind of costume jewelry. They could be fine jewelry and it just got, you know, just got overlooked sometimes. And, you know, again, they're doing their best to look through all of these types of pieces. Um, if you look at these rings, these rings are also ready for um, to be individualized in, into lots. So they would sell this particular lot, that particular lot. You know, I would pick out what I would like. I would like that. I like that ring. I think that ring's great. It's costume, but it's good looking. It's really good looking. It has the faux diamonds all the way around. It has, of course, a, a very large, probably a seven, eight millimeter pearl there. Um, you know, I like the butterflies. Um, the crystals are nice, and you could see the good quality of the crystals. This is a nice ring. That's a nice ring, too. I'm picking all rings that don't really contrast. We'll see if I can find a contrasting color ring. Well, there's always this, but that's not really worth too much. <laughs> that's kind of overdoing it much. Um, this ring is nice, too. Um, that's a marquee cut, so popular again. And look, it's kind of cloudy. So that one a little bit later. This is a nice colored ring. I like the red. But this is, of course, very inexpensive, probably in the $5 range. Um, this was popular, too. These rings were popular, too, sort of that little kidney bean shape, which was made famous by the Tiffany designer Elsa Peretti. She made that kidney bean shape very popular. But beautiful pieces. In terms of this, I'd probably go, if I could do math fast, eh, I'd probably be somewhere around 150 for all of those. I'd probably give. About, these two are really pretty nice, even though they're costume jewelry, these two. And I'd probably say about 175 on these because that ring is a nice ring, even though it's faux. Um, and again, nice pieces. Enamel work, when you're looking at a ring that's been decorated with enamel, you want to see the yellow. You want to make sure the yellow is really quite fine. So I wanted to point out some of the, you know, the tips that will help you to identify good costume jewelry and to find pieces that are really rare. Just like where we are here, it's rare to be here in this more than 100,000 square foot facility. That's why I've got the, the orange vest on, <laughs> this facility that processes everything for e-commerce for goodwill. This is Dr. Lori, and I'm in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota.